there's one thing that you take away from the gospel this morning, let it be this. We are to live with an attitude of gratitude. God desires our wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. And Luke's account of Jesus and the ten lepers tells us that we can't be whole without practicing gratitude. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and the cross. As he enters a village in the area between Galilee and Samaria, he encounters ten people who have been labeled lepers. In biblical times, a person with a skin affliction was considered unclean under Jewish law and required to live alone outside the city or the village, ostracized from the community. Only when a priest determined that the disease had been cured and pronounced the leper clean, could the person rejoin society. As required by Jewish law, the ten lepers stand at a distance from Jesus and shout, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They're begging not for charity, but for healing. Apparently, all ten believe that Jesus is a healer. Jesus sees them. He sees not only their external affliction, but their internal pain and loneliness. And he has compassion for them. And like other healings, Jesus doesn't touch them or pronounce them cured. Instead, he tells them, go and show yourselves to the priests. On their way to be examined, all ten lepers are healed. Nine keep going, as Jesus instructed. I imagine the nine running as fast as they can to find priests, so that under Jewish law, the priests can certify them cure and pronounce them clean. Doubtless, each was imagining a reunion with family and a resumption of the life they were forced to leave behind when they became ill. But one of the lepers, when he sees that he is healed, is so overcome with joy and gratitude that he stops, turns around, and runs back to Jesus, praising God. He falls in the dirt, prostrates himself at Jesus' feet, and thanks him. And then Luke delivers his punchline. And he was a Samaritan. We presume the other nine were Jews who, of all people, should have praised God for healing and recognized that Jesus was the mediator of that divine power. Instead, one foreigner, the Samaritan, a person who the observant Jews of Jesus' day considered a religious heretic, sees the power of God in Jesus and recognizes that through Jesus, he is a recipient God's healing grace. Jesus tells the Samaritan, get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The words Luke uses makes an important distinction between the healing of the nine and the healing of the one. The word used for the healing of the nine means to be healed of a disease or to be made clean. But the word used for the healing of the Samaritan means to be made well, or to be made whole, or to be saved. How often are we like the nine? How often do we fail to see God at work in our lives and in the world? How often do we experience God's grace, but we take it for granted and fail to thank the giver? Why is gratitude to God essential to the wholeness of body, mind, and spirit? The story of the Samaritan leper tells us that to be made whole, we must incorporate thanksgiving into our faith and live with an attitude of gratitude. That attitude must be important or Jesus wouldn't have lamented the lack of gratitude of the nine who failed to return give praise to God. An attitude of gratitude to God focuses us on the loving character of the giver. 
looking at the world through that lens means that we see with the eyes of Jesus and extend God's love to others. A heartfelt thank you God can be easy when good things happen. I remember feeling an overwhelming sense of joy and gratitude at the birth of my son and the birth of his children. Saying thank you God can be more difficult when bad things happen. It can be a challenge to see God's grace in the midst of hard times. When my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and in the years that followed as the disease progressed, I saw God's grace and was grateful to him for giving me the strength to make tough decisions and to cope with changing circumstances. I lived with an attitude of gratitude during those dark days because I trusted that God would take care of both mom and me as I lost her to that disease. Each of us as Christians are to live with an attitude for me, it can be as simple as looking up at the star-studded skies in the morning when I take my dog for a walk and say, thank you, God, for the beauty of creation that I'm able to enjoy today. We'll come to the altar this morning to receive the Holy Eucharist. Eucharist means thanksgiving. And our Eucharistic prayer affirms that it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Living a life of faith is living a Eucharistic life, a life of thanksgiving, living with an attitude of gratitude. When we respond to any act of grace with praise and thanks to God, we can claim Jesus' blessing to the Samaritan. Your faith has made you 